If you have tokenized your flat, you are able to actually rent it out just pressing the button. So in this case, you can create like an Airbnb on steroids. The future of money, CBDC and corporate stablecoins. Smart contracts are not very smart and network bloat is a frequent issue for many blockchains. Let's take a look at one of today's leading enterprise solutions on the market. Alexander Borodich, Universa. <sighs> Ta-da! Come on, come on, come on. It's the first country, African country, launched digital currency was strong enough under the, you know, under the central bank close look at the, the IMF close look and, you know, in the current economy, it's not that easy to launch digital currency because a lot of regulation and stuff you have to solve before you will get it available to the public. So definitely the future of, uh, of uh, money is digital. So we have today CBDC and stable coins as, as a topic. We as Universal is actually global infrastructure. We are currently the fastest blockchain in the world. Uh, definitely not cryptocurrency. We don't have any cryptocurrency inside. We are definitely infrastructure for del del delivering the money as a service. Money when you can actually use and us create the CBDC. If you're a country or central bank, you create, may create digital shares, smart money, adding rules on top of that, or corporate money if you'd like to tokenize some asset which should be tokenized. So why we are talking about the future of money? Because it's quite simple to understand that actually almost everything across us evolves except the banknotes. They steal cash, and cash is a king. Of course, cash is a king. But actually, it might be done using the blockchain technologies. It might be done within the cryptography and CBDC means that central bank digital currency, because who should print the digital cash? Of course, the central banks will print digital cash for the many, many years from now, because they will never let you to print the digital cash instead of them. So next several years, we will see how central banks actually issue digital currency in many, many countries currently. China trying to, to build up the CBDC. Turkey will launch CBDC next year, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But actually, it's also the transition period, because when they will, will issue the CBDC, it, they will understand that then they, again, have the same problem to how to exchange their CBDC to other CBDC. And then it comes out to United CBDC. So our goal is just to sit calm and wait until they ask us to create those United CBDC using the Universal platform. How come you've got Dai on your slides? Sorry? How come you've got Dai because it's one of the world? Uh, Go back a slide. Oh, uh, yes. So it's one that's not launched, Libra's not launched. Yeah. But the biggest one of ours, you're not mentioning. Who? Dai. I don't know them. But the biggest one, make a Dai, you must know them. No, 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 we are, we are, we are creating the, the money for, for nations. I mean, the d standard cash. We are not from the cryptocurrency society. And you don't know about the DAI? No. It's ridiculous, Mark. Come on. Uh, come on, it's ridiculous. The biggest one in the world, you've never heard of it. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Because we are actually playing against the USD, Euro, Swiss francs, because we think the paper cash should turn digital. That's it. So we are providing the technology how the central banks can turn their national currency to the digital form, yeah, no more or less. You have done your research. No, no, it's not a research. It's just the transition phase. Don't understand the theory of the dark. It's OK, OK. Let's compare it to the fiat payments. We have a lot of them. And they will turn to the digital format. Because actually, it's cheaper and more safe and transparent for the central banks. They can, then can control the digital cash. It's available all the time, 24 hours, seven days a week. No, but you're misrepresenting the slides. No, no, no. Yes, you missed the purpose. No. no, yes, of course. You're and not talking about the elephant in the room. Probably, probably. But it's your subjective perception of my speech. It's not a problem at all. Uh, so then uh, you can add smart contracts on top of that. So you can program, add the rules 
on top of your cash banknotes. So for example, in Islamic country, you can add the rule that you cannot spend this currency on uh, alcoholic and tobacco products by design. Or you can actually mark the currency with a special star so the state budget won't be able to spend, I mean, by in, uh, for a private uh, person. And uh, when you create the banknote, you actually spend quite a lot, like a 15 cents to issue one banknote. So to create the currency, you spend money. To destroy the currency, you spend money. And even to, to move the currency from one bank to another bank, you need an armored car with a guards to transfer your cash. And a digital form, of course, it's, it's a lot, a lot, a lot cheaper. So you save all those costs. And again, the zero human factor, no one would like to, to actually grab this uh, armed car. So the central banks can use this system to drastically decrease the, uh, the cost of creating the currency, of managing the currency, and to exchanging the currency together with the uh, cross-border transfers, cross-border remittance. And as the te technology is available now, the question is how to actually use the current banks, because banks do not hold that digital cash account, central banks will hold. So the banks just can provide the better customer service, payment cards, mobile apps, but no more, no less. If the bank will fail, you will still be able to get your cash from the, from the central bank. But if we have digital cash, which is linked to your account, that means we can create the digital history of you, your digital passport together with your digital wallet, together with your digital health history, educational history, etc., etc., etc. So we are creating the digital history for the whole person. And probably it would be stored at the central bank layer. As for corporate uh, coins, stable coins, let's check something the next largest market after the money, after the cash, it's real estate. So what is logical currently? Currently it's possible using the blockchain technology to actually digitize the square meters. And then if we will digitize the square meters, we will get instead of coin market cap, we will get the crypto real estate when if you bought one meter in Rio de Janeiro, you can buy one meter in Amsterdam, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and then they follow the prices. If you do believe the prices will go up. But currently it's possible to tokenize. If you have tokenized your flat, you are able to actually rent it out just pressing the button. So in this case, you can create like an Airbnb on steroids, which would be 100% digitally managed. You would be able to pay all the bills, you would be able to get all the rent through your digital tokens or tokenization. So FinTech and PropTech Currently, there are two largest markets which we are entering into the tokenization. So all the derivatives, all the real estate would be tokenized, and it's like a 700 trillion USD per year. And they will definitely be digitized by using such technologies as universal, as through CBDC, through stable coins, square meters, all other assets. It will, might be gold, it might be intellectual property, it might be user-generated contact, or it might be your working hours. All such things would be easily tokenized. So if you have any assets to tokenize, contact us today, and we will provide you with UBI. You know UBI. It's universal basic income. You will get money till your death, almost for free, through Universa. Thank you very much for hearing us. Mm -hmm.